The second type of multiplying vectors is called the cross product. And the cross product has a very specific purpose. It's to answer the question, how do we find a vector orthogonal to two vectors? And as I said, the answer to this is the cross product. It's a product where we multiply two vectors together and end up with a, another vector that is orthogonal or perpendicular to the other two vectors. In fact, let's write that down. Always orthogonal. to the other two vectors. And unlike the dot product, the cross product only works in three dimensions. So let's say I've got a vector u that has component form of a, b, c, and another vector v that has component form d, e, f. If I want to calculate the cross product of u crossed with v, the way we calculate that is we take bf minus ce to get the x component, cd minus af to get the y component, and ae minus bd to get the z component. Now, while this technically is the formula for the cross product, and if you really like memorizing formulas, you can memorize this formula, I find it very difficult to memorize the cross product formula. So instead, I look at a thing that comes from linear algebra that's quite simple called the determinant. And here, we're not going to go into detail with the determinant. We're just going to look at how a determinant works with what's called the 2 by 2 matrix. If I want the determinant of a, b, c, d, the way the determinant is calculated is we take the first diagonal, a, d, and we subtract the second diagonal, c, b. Or actually, let's put it alphabetically. Let's call it b, c. And if I can remember this pattern of multiplying one diagonal and subtracting the other diagonal, it's actually really easy to find the cross product. The cross product is the determinant of the other rows. Actually, we'll call them other columns. With a little caveat that the middle component we do backwards. Here's what I mean by that. Let's say we'll take the same u and v vectors and put them on top of each other. u is a, b. C and V we said was D E F. To combine these to get U crossed with V, first we look at the x component. When we do the x component, we ignore the x column and find the determinant of what's left which is bf minus the other diagonal, ce. Then when we do the middle component, we ignore the middle column. And the middle works backwards. So we're going to do the backwards diagonal first. So we're going to diagonal and do cd minus 
the AF diagonal. Then for our third component, we can ignore the third column. And we've got AE minus BD. And you notice that gives us the exact same formula we had up above that I highlighted in yellow. But by using this determinant strategy, we don't really have to memorize the formula. We just have to remember, ignore the column we're working on, find the determinant, and the middle works backwards. So let's try a few examples. Let's say vector p is equal to 5, 1, 2, and vector q is equal to negative 2, 3, 1. If I want to do p crossed with q, we can take the 5, 1, 2 above and the negative 2, 3, 1 below, and we can cross them. For the first component, we ignore the first column, and we find the determinant. 1 times 1 is 1, minus 2 times 3 is 6. For the second component, we'll ignore the second column, but we have to work backwards. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 5 times 1 is 5, and we subtract, so minus 5. And then for the third component, we ignore the third column. 5 times 3 is 15. Minus 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, so it becomes a plus 2. And when we put that all together, we get our cross product, which is negative 5, negative 9, 17. And what we've done is we have found a vector that is perpendicular orthogonal to both p and q vectors. Now here's an interesting question, though. With multiplication, including the dot product, order does not matter. Does order matter with the cross product? Let's take a look at it. Let's do b here. And we're going to cross them in the opposite order. We're going to do q crossed with p. And when we do that, now we've got the q vector first, negative 2, 3, 1, and the p vector second, 5, 1, 2. And when we cross those, let's see what we get. Ignoring the first column, 3 times 2 is 6, minus 1 times 1 is 1, comma. Ignoring the second column and working backwards in the middle, 1 times 5 is 5. Minus negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, so plus 4, comma. Ignoring the third column, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Minus 3 times 5 is 15. And now what we end up with is 5, 9, and negative 17. How does that compare with the answer we got before when we did peak.q? Notice every positive is negative and every negative is positive. They are not the same, but they're very similar because they're both perpendicular to our vectors. They just need to go in opposite directions. which kind of starts to lead to some properties of our cross product. p cross q and q cross p are very similar. They're just opposite directions. Let's list some properties of the cross product. So first, we'll do some general properties. And we'll start with the one we just talked about. 
that if we do u cross v, that's going to be the opposite of v cross u. Another interesting thing about our properties is if you have a constant or a scalar that's multiplied by a vector, it doesn't matter when or where you multiply that scalar. You can take that scalar times the cross product of uv, or we can do the scalar times u and then cross it with v. Or we can do the u crossed with the scalar times the v. It doesn't matter where that scalar appears with the u, with the v, or in front of the cross product. You'll get the same result either way. Another interesting result is if we take a vector and we cross it with the 0 vector, 0 comma 0 comma 0, you can imagine the multiplication working out there. You're ultimately doing a lot of multiplying by 0. You end up with the 0 vector. And the 0 vector is just a vector filled with zeros. And if we took a vector and we crossed it with itself, if you imagine what's happening there, is when we do that determinant step, you're going to be subtracting the same thing that you multiplied. And so you'll also end up with the 0 vector. So those are some general properties of the cross product. Some specific properties, though, with our ikj vectors that are interesting. If i is crossed with j, we end up with k. And if j is crossed with k, we end up with i. And if k is crossed with i, we end up with j. So it kind of looks like if we cross, we just end up with the other vector. But one thing we have to be careful of is with cross product, the order matters. That means if we were to actually calculate j crossed with i, we can't just say it's the missing k. It's actually the opposite of k. And k crossed with j is the opposite of i. And i crossed with k is the opposite of j. So the order does matter there with those properties. So let's see if we can use some of these properties to help us simplify some of our uh, cross products. Let's leave those ijk properties on the screen as we go to number three using the properties. Let's take a look at doing 2i crossed with 3j and the answer crossed with j. Well, one thing we know about scalars is we can pull those scalars out front and we still get the same result. So what we're really talking about is 6 times i crossed with j crossed with j. Well, we know that ij crosses to k. So we have 6k crossed with j. We also know that k crossed with j, notice that's backwards. So we're going to get a negative out of it, negative 6i. And so we end up with our final solution using the properties of negative 6i. Let's do another one. Let's do i crossed with k, cross that with k, crossed with j. Well, ik 
crosses to j. And kj, actually ik crosses to negative j because the order is backwards. J k, or kj cross to negative i. Well, we know these scalars, these negative scalars can pull out front. So negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. We're really just doing um, j crossed with i. And j crossed with i, we know, is negative k. And so in this way, we can simplify using some of our cross product properties rather than having to go through all the work of the determinant to find our final cross product. That's what we're looking at today, though, is the cross product. You can either memorize the formula or remember the cross product pattern. Uh, remember, the center is the opposite order. But the other two follow that determinant pattern. We'll take a look at these in class, practice some of these on the homework, and we'll answer your questions when we see you.